Red Demon, written by Stepney the Bluebell Engine. It was the night before Halloween, and all the engines were finishing up their jobs for the day. Percy was taking the mail. He was running smooth. As soon as he passed Edward's station, he came to a red signal. Percy, confused, just waited for the signal to turn green. Then he heard a hiss and a pop, followed by a screech, and then a boom. What on earth was that? said Percy, scared and confused. But he didn't have time to think about it, as the signal dropped and Percy headed out on his way. When he got back to the shed, the other engines were telling ghost stories. Percy told them about the incident he had earlier. Glenn was there. He had brought a rail tour down from Ulfstead Castle. As Percy spoke, he turned pale. That's the Red Demon, he said quietly. What? said the other engines. The Red Demon, that's what Percy heard, said Glenn. Who's the Red Demon? said Percy. Glenn paused. A long time ago, he began, there was an engine. He went by many names, but he loved being called Red Dash, because he was the fastest. He was our main express engine before Gordon. He always boasted that he was the fastest. But one day, our controller came to see him. Our controller said that he was being replaced with a more faster Gresley design. Red Dash was furious and began to plan to show our controller that he could never be replaced. Soon, night fell, and Red Dash backed down on his last late night express. The passengers boarded, and they set off. Red Dash was determined to prove to our controller that he could never be replaced. Red Dash went so fast that soon he reached his top speed. His safety valve burst but he didn't stop. He kept racing along the line. His rivets started to pop. His boiler started to dent from the inside. As he passed Edward's station, it happened. He exploded. His reins were found outside Edward's station the next morning. They were, it was quickly cl cleaned up and covered up. A year after the accident, some workmen were repairing the line near Edward Station when they heard a hiss followed by a pop and a screech followed by a boom followed by a demonic laugh. The workmen were frightened and headed back to the workmen's hunt. They didn't know what they heard. Eventually, they came to the conclusion that it was Red Dash's gross ghost haunting the line, but they didn't call him Red Dash anymore. They called him the Red Demon. The engines were silent. None knew what to think. Thomas and Percy were scared off their chassis, but Gordon found the story a great joke. Oh, Glenn, that was such a good story. You may have scared the little engines, but you haven't scared me. Gordon, that the story is true," said Glenn. "Preposterous! How could something like that happen? Now stop being silly, engines, and go to sleep." The engines went to sleep, but the story of the red demon played on their mind, making it hard to sleep. The next morning, Glenn headed back to Olstead Castle. Gordon was still boasting how Glenn was getting old to his old age. Edward, who was sitting in the shed felt sorry for Glenn, even though he wasn't there. He was good friends with the little coffee pot engine, and did not like it to see Gordon denounce his friends. Gordon, you have to take this seriously, said Edward. That actually happened. Preposterous, said Gordon. Edward, what are you thinking? It never happened. Now stop being a silly engine, and fetch my coaches. Edward rolled his eyes and left to go get Gordon's express coaches. Gordon also came one out of the shed to go wait for the coaches. The day went by, and not another word was said about the Red Demon. 
Night fell, and Gordon backed down on his late night express. The guard blew his whistle, and Gordon set out into the darkness. Gordon made good time, but as he passed Edward Station, he came to a red signal. That's odd, said Gordon. There aren't any other trains out at this time. Gordon waited patiently. Five minutes passed, and he began to grow impatient. What's taking so long? said Gordon. There are barely any other trains out on this line. Just then, he heard a hiss, then a pop, followed by a screech, and then a boom. Gordon shook. He knew what that was. Then he heard a demonic laugh. <laughs> you should have listened to the old engines, King Horse. They aren't losing their mind. They tried to warn you about me. You just scoffed. Gordon was terrified. The voice continued. Well, now, you're just going to be a story. <gasps> the next morning, the engines woke up and found Gordon not in his berth. That's odd, said Edward. It's not like him to sleep on the other railway. That's because he didn't reach the other railway. The engines jumped. There was Sir Topham Hatt, coming out of his car and walking over to the engines. Gordon's coaches were found early this morning by Henry taking the flying kipper, said the fat controller. The vicar's town station master said that he'd never arrived. But Edward's station station master said he passed by, but then he just didn't come back. The engines looked concerned and scared for Gordon. Sir Topham had finished. Gordon is missing, said Sir Topham had. 